managing to stay safe. I don't know what your thoughts are, um, but I certainly feel like lockdown is providing so many opportunities that we never would have thought of um, should this time not have happened. We've seen so many people across the world coming together in virtual choirs, bands, Bible studies, meetings, Zooms, the list is endless. And our young people at Millfield bless us in abundance each week. So we really felt like we wanted to do something to bring to you during this time. I hope over the next 45 minutes you can relax in the comfort of your own home, put your feet up, grab a cup of tea as you hear your music, spoken word and have insight into what the young people have been getting up to during lockdown. But most importantly, I hope you feel blessed and closer to God. Hello everyone. Technology has been a real gift and blessing throughout lockdown and it is meant that we have still been able to keep in touch with the members of the Wifey Band and Singing Company. We are so privileged at Millfield to have such a great group of young people and they are precious to every single one of us. Although we haven't been able to have our Tuesday rehearsals, we have met weekly on Zoom at 6.30. We have took part in quizzes, scavenger hunts around the house and even a game of charades. It has enabled us to keep our fellowship going. At the end of each Zoom, we have a devotions period which has been a great source of encouragement to myself and the young people. Lockdown has taught us all lots of things and you will hear from the young people throughout this video this evening. I have a question for Mel. What has lockdown taught you? Well, this period of time has uh, really filled me with such a mixture of emotions, um, both positive and negative ones. I've missed friends and family like I never have before but I've also loved spending time with my own little family. It's certainly given me the opportunity to sit back and appreciate the little things which were often taken for granted at times, or sometimes I was probably too busy to even notice. The bird song, the beauty of God's creation, even having the opportunity to savour the taste of a morning coffee rather than rushing it um, to get to work on time. The young people at Millfield have also blessed me so much and it's amazing what impact that they can have, even from their own homes. At one point putting this video together, the hairs on the back of my neck stood and the tears began rolling down my face. And lockdown has really shown me that although the church building has closed their doors, Christ is still at work. How about you, Hannah? Lockdown has taught me many things. Firstly, it has given me a chance to be still and to take a step back from the regular busyness of life. It has taught me how to be brave and independent being on my own. However, the most important thing lockdown has taught me is to count my blessings, be thankful and not take things for granted. It is so easy to take our ordinary lives for granted. This time has allowed me to enjoy the beautiful world God created for us time to enjoy walks in the woods and along the river and to enjoy the beautiful sunshine in my garden. It has taught me to appreciate the little things in life and I can't wait to be reunited properly with my friends and family. To get us started this evening I have chosen a favourite memory of mine, the Wipey Band at Derby performing the march Fired Up. <laughs> Thank you. 
and how old you are. Hi, my name is Ashley and I am 15 years old. What is the first thing you want to do after lockdown? First thing I'm doing after lockdown is going to Nando's with my best friend Olivia. Can you tell us what God has shown you during lockdown? During lockdown, God has shown me that I need to appreciate the little things in life. But I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us 
from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from our loved ones, distant from friends, away from neighbours, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation, not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. And may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far, or recognising our shared vulnerability, each of us grateful for every breath and willing everyone to know the gift of a full and healthy life. Keep us all in your care. Amen. Dear God, we pray for people affected by the coronavirus outbreak, key workers especially, but also people who have lost loved ones. We trust in you that you will be near us always and we hope that there will be an end to lockdown as soon as it is safe to do so. We hope that in these times of loneliness that more of your people have drawn close to you and we also pray that people feel encouraged to spread your word to those who need to hear it. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for being here with us and looking after us, especially during these uncertain times and lockdown. It's good we are able to meet together via social media and although it's not the same as being together physically, we are thankful we have found different ways to communicate and worship. We think about our frontline medical staff in the NHS who are risking their lives to save others in these unprecedented times and we thank you for their courage and love shown to people in their care when family and friends have not been able to visit. We are sorry for the lives that have been lost due to the coronavirus and we are praying for those who are still battling to defeat it. Lord, we pray for these things to happen in your name. It's because of you we are a part of our church family and we ask you to bless us all and to keep us safe. We ask these things through the precious name of Jesus. Tell us your name and how old you are. Hiya, I'm Aksha Finney and I'm 20. What is the first thing you'd like to do after lockdown? There's lots of things I want to do after lockdown. Uh, probably the first one would be to go out and see my friends and go to Nando's um, or go down to Roca Beach, uh, buy myself fish and chips and uh, my favourite ice cream from Minchella's with the raspberry swirls because uh, that's what I crave the most when I'm away from home. Can you tell us what God has shown you in lockdown? God has shown me what I take for granted every day. So friends, family and good health, especially at this time. Um, and also how a virus that we can't see that affects the lives of so many people around the world um, and disrupted them completely, yet it has the power to bring people out of their own little worlds and start caring for each other, looking out for their neighbours and just generally spreading a bit more love than we usually did. Um, and I'm so grateful that I got to spend lockdown here in Sunderland with mum and dad um, because my uni got shut down and uh, they started doing online classes so um, I can do these classes from here which is incredible and um, I'm so grateful because uh, they say that the second year of exams are very very tough so uh, I, I can just do the uh, online tests just sitting at home so I'm so grateful for that.
strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The book of Joshua starts just after the death of Moses as God is preparing Joshua to take the Israelites into the promised land. Joshua is naturally scared and anxious, but God reassures him. Four times within the first chapter, God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. As we go through these days in lockdown, days of uncertainty, we're probably all experiencing mixed emotions. Some may be happy at not having to go to school, but at the same time, sad because you're not spending time with your friends. Others could be anxious about what the future holds with regards to results for exams that you should have taken, university places, or moves to new schools in September, exam preparation for next year. The list can go on, but in amongst all of this confusion, anxiety and uncertainty, as it states in Joshua 1 verse 9, be strong and courageous, for God is with you. Amen.
Good afternoon. It's lovely to spend a few moments with you just here this afternoon. And um, Mel asked me a couple of weeks ago if I would do a little bit of a Bible thought and some kind of like word of encouragement. I don't know whether you've looked lately to see how many people have listened to the Sing Company sing, but it's over 4,000. Now, I think it's fair to say if we hadn't been going through this set of circumstances, we would never have got that opportunity. And so young, young people and all the people who listen to my voice now, you need to be assured that God is working through your very lives at this moment in time. And he has a plan for each and every one of you because you are an amazing set of young people and he values you so very, very much. Now the Bible verse that I have for you this afternoon is probably a little bit you know, different to what one might be expecting, but it's when Jesus calms the storm. Now I don't know about you, but inside me now, there's an awful kind of like storm raging. I'm worried about different things. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my church family. And part of that is actually you. But Jesus, in a very special way, spoke to his own disciples. And in this particular illustration, he talks about calming the storm. In Matthew chapter 9, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came upon the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? He then got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The coming days, we're probably going to feel a little bit scared about different things, about what the future holds. But assured, be assured that Jesus has you in the very palm of his hand. You know why? Because he loves you. And he's going to use you in the future for great things. So be assured of that. Hope you're all keeping well and safe. And you take care. Look forward to meeting up again in person in the very near future. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Can you tell us what your name is and how old you are? Hi, my name is Emily and I'm 16 years old. What is the first thing you want to do after lockdown, Emily? I think I will visit my grandparents and my friends and then go for a big meal with my family. Can you tell us what God has shown you during lockdown? Probably that I shouldn't take my friends and my family for granted and to spend more time with my family when I have the chance.
we decided we wanted to thank the staff at our local hospital by giving them a treat. The first time we sent stuff, it was just from our family. We sent soaps, biscuits, hand cream, bath bombs, tea, coffee, chocolates and candles. As Easter approached, we then decided to ask our neighbours if they would like to donate money or Easter eggs for the staff. As word got out, children from our mum's school sent Easter eggs too. Some core families also sent money. Gradually our living room became home to more and more eggs. Within a few days we had nearly 600 Easter eggs. Some people brought eggs and some gave money. Our mum and dad went and bought over 500 eggs in their tiny car. A local shop owner heard about our idea and he volunteered to help them transport the eggs to my mum's friend Debbie. Debbie's a midwife at the hospital. She gave the eggs out. We, she managed to give eggs to paramedics, porters, canteen staff, cleaners, as well as all the midwives and doctors and nurses on the COVID wards. A photograph of all the families who donated is now in the James Cook University Hospital. Thank you, NHS. The Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's been a long time since we met together, hasn't it? I think when we do meet together, we should have a party. What do you think? Have you ever been to a party where there's been party poppers? You know those plastic little bottles that are full of string, coloured string, with a tiny bit of explosive, with a string, and when you pull the string, it pops. The potential for the pop is all held in that tiny little bottle. It reminds me a little bit about the Holy Spirit. God promises us at Pentecost. God has given us the Holy Spirit. His power, His life, His breath are all packed up inside of us just like that party popper. However, we must not and cannot keep it in. The love and truth and faith and power that are within us need to be shared, released for the good of others. But unlike the party popper, once popped, it's empty. The more we give out, the more God's Holy Spirit refills us to be his witnesses in this world. Thank you for witnessing through your music and your song. Bless you all. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the time we have been able to spend worshipping together in your name and for the blessings each and one of us have received from being able to do this. During these uncertain times, we pray for the dedication and bravery of our frontline workers and those providing the essential services we need for our daily lives. Please be with each and every one of us during this time and please make your presence especially felt to those of us who are perhaps feeling a little lonely or anxious, unable to leave our homes and place your loving arms around those who have sadly lost a family member or a friend during this time. Lord, provide them with the comfort and support so they know they are not alone. We pray, Jesus, that you will watch over our loved ones who are returning to work this week that you will keep them safe. We thank you for the fellowship and friendship of our core and knowing that there is always someone caring. Thank you Lord for our families and our friends and the happiness and funny moments we have shared during lockdown. We also thank you for our grand and granddad mastering FaceTime and Zoom during this time so we can all keep in touch Please continue to give us your love and strength during the coming weeks until we can all meet up again. Lord, we ask these things in your name. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear God, we want to thank you for being able to do this while we aren't able to meet up how we normally do every Sunday due to the coronavirus. We thank you to all the key workers who are still working hard to help protect the society while we're in lockdown. We pray for the individuals and their families who have been affected by the virus and we hope you bring your blessing upon them at this difficult time. 
It's a nerve wracking time for everyone at the minute as we are unaware of what the near future holds. So please be with us as we know you have a plan for us. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Dear God, at this time when we are unable to meet together in person, we are thankful that we can still worship you virtually. We pray for everyone who may watch this recording that they may receive something from it and be brought closer to you. Continue, Lord, to be close to all doctors, nurses and other key workers and please keep them safe during this difficult time. Lord, as we look outside at your wonderful creation, we are reminded that you are still a loving God who cares for each one of us. Help us to look after your world so that when this time of lockdown is over, we will still be able to see the wonderful things you have done and made. Lord, keep us safe and in your care. We ask us in your name. Amen. May the peace of God be in your heart. May the grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your soul and in the song that your life sings. Amen.